I'm Novia from Adulting with Novia, and today we're going to talk about deep planning. Now, what is deep planning? Deep planning is basically when you gather all your materials in your curriculum, you go through it, and you break it down into manageable pieces. Those pieces will become lessons. And then you just basically record it in your planner for however long you so choose to plan. Now, why is it important? It's important because when you don't deep plan or detail plan, you're not planning to fail, but you are going to miss some important stuff like concepts, projects, or sometimes entire subjects. Another reason it's important is accountability for you and your little one. And it also provides some sort of peace and organization and it's able, it enables you to be able to narrow down to the important stuff and completely miss all the fluff. And to prevent you from going Pinterest crazy and trying to implement too many ideas, therefore overloading you and your kiddo. So what I have here in front of me are basically the supplies you need. So I have some recollections post-it notes from forever ago that I don't use very much because some of the glue works, you watch, and some of them yeah, don't. Like, they're pretty, but that's not usable. But some of them actually are. But yeah, you're going to need post-it notes, your planner, cause, or because you're going to use these to tentatively do a lesson plan when you're after you go through this. You're going to need your curriculum itself. I have, like, all my curriculums, either their scopes of study or the lessons themselves or you can just use the regular old table of contents here. Your outline for the year, that's important. Your course of study, that's what we created in the last video when we we're trying to figure out our student schedule. This is actually your course of study, so that way you know what curriculums you're teaching, what curriculums you're using to teach those subjects, how long it is and how often you're doing it. You're gonna need your student schedule. Hopefully yours looks way better than mine because hot mess. And if you are an overachiever, you made yourself some sort of rudimentary schedule as well. In the last video, I wanna point out that I actually made these grid worksheets. They're free for you to download and use as you need to create a schedule. This one with the million boxes is actually if you want to do your hours in half hour increments for up to 12 hours. And then this one is just an hourly. So, I mean, those resources are there for you to use. And you'll need just paper and a pen. Me and that paper, paper made flare are like tight like butt cheeks right now. But the most, the main thing, the main thing schedule you're going to need is your student schedule because that's your daily schedule. The first deep planning tip I want to give you is to basically plan for when you're going to plan. I know that sounds ridiculous and redundant, but you need to make sure you set time aside in order for you to have enough time to break out your curriculum, go through your materials, familiarize yourself with the subjects and the materials that are in there, the scope of sequence, the lessons, the table of contents, things like that. So you can help know the pacing and the setup of said curriculum. Now, you got your student schedule here and your student, your student schedule will help you deep plan in the fact that you know what, you, what time settings you have here and it will help you be able to break down your curriculum here into your weekly lessons. So you have it all broken down evenly throughout your 180 days, 36 weeks of school. Now, each of these curriculums are completely different in their setup. Some of, especially when it comes to our schedule, some of them have this wonderful scope of sequence that gives you what you're doing every single day and it's so easy because if you get if you luck out and get curriculum like this all you have to do is just transfer the lesson directly to the book it's so it, it, it's so easy I, I love those but some of them like the history we're gonna try out this year 
it's not set up like that <laughs> at all. So I had to actually go through each of the lessons, because the lessons, and break it down into manageable bites to become manageable lesson plans for our schedule. So our lesson one, each lesson for this curriculum is supposed to last one week. There's no way with as much as we have in our daily schedule, there's no way we're gonna be able to fit all of this into three days for us and have her to be able to retain the information and have fun with it. So I actually ended up breaking it down into six days, which for us would be two weeks. Our science fits perfectly in our schedule because it's for each week is two days and that has as many days as we have in our schedule. So that's quite perfect for us. And then here for our spelling, it just has steps or lessons. And this completely depends on your kid. Some kids progress faster than others. I like to a lot about a week per step to make sure she retains the information because she's dyslexic. So when it comes to spelling and reading, I really like to take my time with her for that so that she retains that information. Now what I'm gonna do with this little piece of paper here is basically write out each subject and then I'm going to go through each curriculum and figure out how many lessons we're gonna do in a five week period. I don't plan any further than our next school break. So we school for five weeks and then we take a break for a week. School for five weeks, take a break for a week. But I don't try and plan anywhere as detailed beyond that. That's, that's too far for me. It doesn't allow for a lot of flexibility. It doesn't allow me for spontaneous learning moments. I don't like writing, and I honestly, I plan week by week because I don't like putting things too far off into the future because things change. And I like, if there's an event that pops up locally, I want that I think is educational and something she would enjoy, I want us to do that. Even if I just found out about it like three, hours beforehand. I like that flexibility. That's one of the main benefits for me to homeschool. So our detail plan, like our lesson plans should not be so rigid to where we are stressed. We are like not reaching these ideal times that the curriculum gives us. Anyway, off my soapbox. So yeah, for our writing, if you look at the hot mess student schedule, you'll notice our writing, we only do three days a week. I mean, I, I leave out an hour because this actually has DVDs you have to watch with lessons, and some of them are very, very long. Like I said in my last video, the, fir the very first video we have to watch is 42 minutes. That's a lot of time. <laughs> so on the other days, if she's faster than an hour, great. Then we just move on and she has extra time for lunch, recess, whatever. But I allot an hour, but we're only doing it for three days a week. So for this, I have to figure out where we're going to be in five weeks. All right, so at the end of five weeks, we are just finishing week three Our science fits perfectly in our schedule because it only allows for, it allots two days per week. So I'm just gonna put, we're just gonna follow the scope. History is a bit more different. The history that we're trying this year for a beginner, that's what they say. You should do it about three days a week which also fits perfectly in our schedule now that I switched our science and history because originally science was three days, now it's history three days and science two days. And with this one, I actually had to look at the lesson itself and break everything down because there is no way we'd be able to get through all of this in a week, in three days. 
there's just no way we'd be able to get through this and do it justice and have her be able to retain the information. So I'm breaking it down in even more. So each lesson at this point, instead of it being one week, will end up being two weeks. So I know we're going to be starting For spelling, my daughter is dyslexic. So with this, I like to take our time with this and reading to make sure that she retains the information and understands what's being taught to her. So each step or lesson in this curriculum, I allot for a week, which seems it, which may seem long to some people who actually use this program, but for us, it's perfect. It assures me that she understands the concept that's being taught to her. Our cursive is actually divided, is actually on, only in pages because it's a teacher pay, pay teacher printable. And we are doing it two days a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays. We're just gonna do a page and a page, two pages a week and see how that goes for us. Hey, hey there, buddy. Hey, I want to show you that I already did this. <laughs> But this here, this is my finished like five week like overview outline at a glance before I actually start lesson planning and knowing what's going on. So in my mat in the math, we're using math you see. So I know it's like we're in the twenties for the sheet, so it's like twenty something through twenty something. I don't know. I'll get into detail once it's time to lesson plan. Our history, we're just gonna do Africa and lesson one and lesson two because we only do it three days three days a week and I broke it down into two weeks yeah so we may get on to lesson three but I feel like I'm gonna add two big projects to that to make it interesting for science this way I know where we are we're gonna follow the exact scope of secret sequence so there's no altering of anything of any kind for writing i know week one we're here and then we're actually week three that's completely wrong from spelling i know which lessons we're going through for each week so i'm just basically gonna follow that for cursive i got a bit more detailed i decided to uh, i'm using i'm going to use the handwriting without tears suggestion for what letters to start like what letter order to start learning so we're gonna start off with the lowercase c, a, d, g, q, and i. And I just wrote down the pages in the printable where they are. For, um, I'm, we're gonna be using the Good and the Beautiful Creative Companion Level 4 for art. It also adds some geography in there. And um, we're gonna do some between lesson two and lesson six since she seems to be focusing on the East Coast in New York City there and learning pastel techniques. For our grammar, we're gonna start off with nouns, homophones, end marks, and end with who clauses. And our reading, basically, like I said before in my previous videos, we're gonna be doing literary studies. So I'm going to be using a teacher, pay teacher novel unit for her book. The book, the first book we're gonna do is what? Judy Bloom's Tale of the Fourth Grade Nothing with the fudge. And we, we do reading every single day. So it has 10 chapters in this book. So for five weeks, two chapters a week, that seems reasonable. And we'll have two worksheets to do to complement that because I think the novel study has a worksheet, a comprehension worksheet or activity or something for every single chapter. So it's manageable. So this is my overall five week plan because that's how long it is before our first break. I have this nice overview. It's not freaking me out. I, I'm, I'm okay with this. I've taken a whole bunch of curriculum and I've broken it down into a manageable bite that doesn't make me wanna cry. So once you figure that out, you know exactly what you're looking at in your sheets and you can tentatively break out your planner here and some post-it notes with your curriculum and get your life together. So.
Okay, so this is tentatively with all the post-it note crazies, our first week of school and what we're doing. We went through all that and took a whole bunch of different curriculums and turned it into something that's hopefully gonna be more manageable than getting these post-its to lay down because we're about to fight, it's, it's annoying. So I got all the math figured out, the writing, the history, the spelling, the art, the reading, the cursive. So what really looked absolutely insane on my original course of study looks way more manageable when it's on unruly post-it notes apparently. Let's see, remember when we figured this out in the last video for the schedule and that looked like a hell of a lot of stuff. But on paper, like on, during the week, it's really not because I took everything and broke it down into pieces that we can actually do and use while still following our student schedule. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. And I think the next one, the next ones in the Back to Homeschool series are, I'm, I'm gonna show you what curriculum I use for third grade and what curriculum I'm gonna use in the fourth grade, even though you've kind of seen some of it <laughs> already. But I'll give my reasons why, at least in that video. And you'll finally be able to see my face. Yay. And that's it. So thank you guys so much for joining me. If you like this video, please click the like button or the thumbs up, the thumbs up button. It's a thumbs up button. Too many different social media avenues, Novia, gosh. But yeah, please click the thumbs up button and don't forget to click the subscribe button and the bell ringer next to it so you get notified when I post my next video. Again, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you guys have a great day. Bye. Wait. Not by. I want to see your comments down there. If you have any questions or anything, comment down below. Let me know. Let's have a let's have a conversation. Let's have a chat. I'm here for you. <laughs> but no, seriously, if you guys have any questions about my process, because it may seem a little scattered, maybe to some. Whatever. My process may not be your process, and that's cool, but it gives you a nice jump off point. Anyway. If you have any questions or concerns or any ideas you'd like to share or any tips for other homeschoolers out there that are struggle busting through this process and feeling completely overwhelmed, leave a comment down below. All right, now I really gotta go because errands and adulting. So yeah, I appreciate you for joining me. Okay, bye.